50th race mark today at a perfect site, Martinsville Speedway, the oldest, most historic track on the schedule. 150 races, but only one man has competed in every one. Jack Sprague has visited 38 tracks, scored 19 victories, and given Chevrolet two series championships. Now, the Ironman has more desire than ever before. Desire to win at Martinsville and celebrate the 150th race in victory lane. And Jack knows his way to many victory lanes on the truck series. And in his 150th start, he would love to find the road to the one here in Martinsville. If he could win on this very special day, Jack could very well go from the Iron Man to the Platinum Man of the truck series. In 2000, the word for Dodge has been domination. With three races at tremendously different tracks like Daytona, Homestead, and Bakersfield, they've scored three poles, one with Rutman, one with Riggs, and one with Musgrave, proving that horsepower under the hood puts them ahead of the rest. They've scored three wins with two different drivers picking up the $10,000 Craftsman bonus. Dodge knows how to win at Martinsville, but can they inch closer to an elusive championship? Well, folks, I already have to change my numbers because now Joe Rutman got another pole. One more dodge. He was the fastest on Friday. And remember, he won at Daytona and has been in position to win each and every week. But I think today it could be the number two truck. Another dodge, Scott Riggs, who's our current point leader, who gets to victory lane. But you know what? He'll have his hands full, too, because there's another dodge right behind him. And that's Bobby Hamilton, who won here one year ago. But maybe the fastest dodge throughout the last couple of weeks has been that of Ted Musgrave, the driver who's won the last two races. Musgrave was great in happy hour, and I look for the one truck to move his way right up to the front again today. ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, presents NASCAR. Today, live from historic Martinsville Speedway in Virginia, it is a landmark day for NASCAR's Craftsman Truck Series as this seventh running of the Advanced Auto Parts 250 marks the 150th event in this young series' seven-year history. After three of 24 events, sophomore sensation Scott Riggs holds a slim 12-point lead over Daytona winner Joe Ruffin. But there's a three-way tie for third among Ted Musgrave, Ricky Hendrick, and two-time champion Jack Sprague. Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Punch, along with uh, Bush Grand National Series and Winston Cup veteran Phil Parsons. We are glad to have you with us today. Phil, this racetrack built way back in 1947 is one of NASCAR's oldest, and no doubt it is seeped with a lot of history and tradition. Now, for the history part, look no further than 10th place starter, Jimmy Hensley. Jimmy Hensley has won seven races at this racetrack in three different divisions. If there's such thing as a home court advantage, Jimmy Hensley has it. Now, how about tradition? Today, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series debut of a third-generation member of the famed Wood Brothers family. The Woods Brothers won here with names like Cale Yarborough, David Pearson in the Winston Cup Series. Now, the grandson of the patriarch of the family, Glenn Wood, starts 31st, John Wood. They are two of our 36 starters. How about the remainder of the field in today's Mopar starting grid? The man who began the year with the win in Daytona, Joe Ruffman, 56 years of age, his 15th career pole. He will lead him down alongside our points leader, Scott Riggs. Back in row two, making his first of three starts this year. He dominated here a year ago in the Dana Dodge. Bobby Hamilton alongside the winner of the last two events in a row, Ted Musgrave. Back in row three, the fastest Chevrolet in the field, the 2000 All-Pro Series champion. Watch for him to be good today, Billy Bigley, alongside the high play drifter, Rick Corelli. Back in row four, Terry Cook, very, very good in happy hour. Could be a big day for K. Automotive and the Keselowski Ford. And how about, there's Jack Sprague, the 150th career start. He's been in them all here at the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. And back in row five, the first of eight starts this year for Kenny Schrader in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, the Federated Auto Parts Chevrolet, and gentleman Jimmy Hensley, a seven-time winner at this racetrack. Starting on the inside of row six, Richard Landon making his first start in the Craftsman Truck Series, and the outside in the big white truck, two-time series winner, sixth in points, Randy Tolsma. Seventh row, we have Nathan Hosley and his teammate, Travis Quapple, who is 10th in points, a rookie. They were teammates last year on the Remax Challenge Series. Eighth row, we have Carlos Contreras, finished 7th in Homestead for his best career finish, and Bobby Dodder, a four-time winner on the Winston West Series last year. Ninth row, we have Dennis Setzer, a five-time series winner. On the outside, Brian Reffner, 96th Rookie of the Year, winner last year at Texas in October. 
And on the 10th row, the leading rookie, tied for third in points, 21 years old this week, Ricky Hendrick. And on the outside, Chuck Cosbelt will have a new sponsor on that truck next race at St. Louis. As you look at the remainder of our starting good, we'll remind you that uh, one of the rookie drivers had a tough break during qualifying. Coy Gibbs spun his truck during qualifying and actually will start in the 51 truck to Rick Ware racing Enterprises Chevrolet that was qualified by Jonathan Price. He will go to the rear of the field. Coy Gibbs in the 51 today, but with him being a sponsorship on board. Look at the remainder of our starting grid. 36, there is Gibbs back in the 51 truck. Jason Small, short track hot shoot from Bakersfield. Ricky Sanders, son of Ronnie Sanders and Michael Dockett. Now that's a 36 car starting field. Let's meet the five drivers who will now carry our onboard cameras here today. Hi, I'm Kenny Schrader, and you're riding along with me in the number 52 Federated Auto Parts Chevrolet Silverado. Hi, I'm Jack Sprague, and you better hang on because you're riding with me in the number 24 Net Zero Chevrolet. Hey, everybody, this is Bobby Hamlin, driver of the Dana Dodge. Thanks for hanging on today with us. You're riding with me, Scott Riggs, in the number two Team ASC CarQuest Dodge. Hi, I'm Joe Rutman, driver of the Dana Dodge. I would suggest a helmet. Ah, uh, yes, anyone who rides with Joe, including Joe, needs to wear a helmet. Let's take a look at our race description today. Myers will speed white point five two six mile oval, banking 12 degrees, nothing on the straightaways. The front and back stretch are 800 feet long. It's two long drag strips and two tight turns. The first is shade over 398,000, a race record. Well, guess what? Gentleman Jimmy Hensley owns it from two years ago. The pit window, and here's where all the debate comes in, Phil Parsons. The pit window, one stop for fuel, but that's only part of the story. Doc, I talked to a number of crew chiefs and drivers this, this morning. I, 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 if I talked to 20, I got 19 different ch chances on what they're going to do. Tires are so good here. They stay fast so long, the guys don't know if they're going to stop. One time for right sides, four tires. They don't know what they're going to do yet. Let's check in the pit sound very quickly, Amy. Well, in addition to Jack Sprague, NASCAR's Owen Kurtz, Jim Kent, crew chief Gary Showalter, and son Chris have also been here for all 150. Ray Dunlap. Well, Amy, here's some of the plans that I heard from some of the guys. They may be doing plan A, B, C, or D, who knows, but I think later on today they'll do this. Tear it all up and throw it away because we won't know until we find out where the cautions fly today. Jerry? All right, thanks, guys. Settle back, green flag coming your way from Roy Selby. NASCAR Craftsman Trucks from Martinsville. in the team truck on the inside of Scott Riggs. It's Dodge, Dodge, Dodge. And guess what? Dodge. That's the front four. Terry Cook holds on in fifth spot. Bobby Hamilton is not wasting any time. He dominated this race last year. Led about 150 of the 250 laps. Challenge for fourth position. Terry Cook, we told you, he was very good at happy hour in the K Automotive Ford. They are looking for a sponsorship. A great one today to just seal the deal someone watching and saying, I want to be on a winning truck. Here's Cook on the inside of Ted Musgrave. He will have the spot in turn four. That's certainly no slouch. I tell you, we got by the first lap, which is one of the most difficult first laps in this truck series because of the low air pressures on these tires. It's really hard to get a hold of this racetrack when the, when the air pressure is low and the tires are cold. Well, I said Cook had the lap. He was the leader last time by. Now Musgrave battles back on the outside. They are door to door and give that lap to Musgrave. Ted is hanging in awfully well on the outside of the racetrack here. That is not the preferred line, at least early on in the racetrack, but he's, he's certainly holding his own with Terry Cook. Once again, the battle you're watching is for fourth position. They are single file up front with Rutland the leader, then Bobby Hamilton, then Scott Riggs. These two side by side for fourth behind him. You got Billy Bigley right behind him in the 75 white and blue truck. This is his type of racetrack, Doc. Ted Musgrave, a former Winston Cup pole sitter here. He's finished second a couple of times in the Winston Cup car. Went back when he was driving for Jack Roush. Still side by side. Talking to Fred Wanky early in the week, 
Ted Musgrave could not wait to get to this racetrack. He loves Martinsville Speedway. He talked about how well he did here in the Winston Cup Series. He could not wait to get here. And now Musgrave will reassume the fourth position. Harry Cook back to fifth. Billy Bigley is sixth. Rick Corelli, who was very, very good at happy hour, and, and Corelli was pumped up in the pre-race this morning. We talked to him downstairs, down in the garage area. He was very excited about the prospects of getting his first win here today. This is his kind of racetrack. That's right. This is the same truck he had in Bakersfield. It was brand new for that race. We've got Jack Sprague now trying to stick his nose on the inside of Rick Corelli. There is Sprague. We mentioned he has 19 career victories in this series and 149 starts. He will take the spot away. Sprague has never won, though, here in Martinsville. He has finished third three times, including the last two consecutive years in a row. Rick Corelli did the smart thing there. He saw Jack Sprague got underneath him. He backed off, let him go. Hey, let's don't use up our tires. Use up our brakes this early in the race. Here's Bobby Hamilton going by Joe Ruckman for the lead. And as you mentioned, Bobby Hamilton dominated this race a year ago, led 179 of 250 laps. Trouble for Dennis Setzer. Uh, Just Dennis, past the start and finish line, headed in turn one. Dennis Setzer in the Axiom machine. After having a great run go away in Bakersfield three weeks ago, now he is very slow on the racetrack. The Newton, North Carolina native, the Axiom Computer Associate Chevrolet for Morgan Dollar Motorsports. He heads for the garage area. We'll update his situation here in just a moment. Great battle. You have Ted Musgrave, who has caught his teammate Scott Riggs in the number two truck. Terry Cook staying right with him in fifth. And now, the 29 K, K Automotive died. Or Ford, I'm sorry. Now, the, the front two cars, the two cars that are painted identically, the Dana Dodges, they are teammates. Bobby Hamilton owns that team. He's leading with Joe Ruffin in second spot. The next two cars are trucks in third, fourth, the two and the one. They are teammates. They are the Ultra Motorsports teammates. Bobby Hamilton has led 22% of every lap he's ever run here in the truck series. There you see Jimmy Hensley in the 72 truck right there. Right behind him in the 84 is Richard Landers making his first start, as we mentioned earlier, in the truck series. Richard Landers out of Pine Hall, North Carolina, driving uh, the Lemons Auto Parts Ford for Charlie Long. Charlie and Robert Long. Let's check in there. Amy, what's going on with Dennis Setzer? Well, Dennis Setzer seems to be having some drivetrain problem. The crew is going to go ahead, go underneath and see if it's something they can find to try to get Dennis back out. Very disappointing way for Dennis to start this Martinsville race. You know, we talk about this racetrack. We talk about brakes and things like that. There's probably not a tougher racetrack on drivetrains, on gears and transmissions than we run anywhere. Very, very difficult. You usually see one guy will lose a gear during this race. We don't know if that's what happened to Dennis, but it could possibly be. There's a look at Jimmy Hensley. In the truck number 72, he is subbing for Randy McDonald, who will have some surgery on his neck. Randy injured the accident in the season opener at Daytona. Back up front, you're looking at Hamilton, the four, Ruffin, the 18. Then our points leader, Scott Riggs, from Bahama, North Carolina, just outside of Durham, North Carolina. Scott Riggs, an accomplished short track driver, runs third with Musgrave in fourth. We are in the early laps here at Martinsville Speedway, the 720 of the Advanced Auto Parts 250. Back with more in a moment. He wins. He's having a bit of fun today, but Philly's running back in seventh spot. Not nearly as much fun as he had if he were leading this thing. Oh, that's right. We're a couple laps into this restart. He took a look on the inside of Big, Billy Bigley in the 75 truck, the blue and white truck in front end, but uh, was not able to make the pass, and now they've stabilized there. Back in third spot now, we are showing uh, Ted Musgrave in the one. He has gone by the two of um, Riggs, and uh, the 29 of Terry Cook is in fourth spot. So Riggs, who was third, has slid back two more positions. We just joined us, by the way. One caution flag coming out on lap 21. Ryan McGlynn's double zero spot. He is on pit road with the hood up. We'll try to update his situation here momentarily. None of the leaders made pit stops. We are back to green flag racing action here at Martinville Speedway. Let's check in the leaders' pits with Ray Dunlap. Well, Jerry, I was a little bit surprised whenever I came through the garage to see what trucks were in here because one year ago, Bobby Hamilton won this race on a Monday afternoon in the truck that Joe Rutman is driving this weekend. The reason is the team built a brand new piece. They call it Angel, 
and that is the one that's leading right now at the wheel of Bobby Hamilton. But I was a little bit surprised they wouldn't give him Goober, the same truck that Rutman's driving. But I guess, hey, when you got two trucks that are that good, as we can see, them running one and two, why not give it a try? And, and the truck that Rutman's in, you mentioned this Goober, that's the one that Bobby dominated with here a year ago. That's also the one that, that uh, Joe Rutman won with at Indianapolis Raceway Park and in Chicago last year. So three of the four wins that Hamilton Racing has have come in the 18 truck that uh, Hamilton is running second with right now. So that's a pretty good truck. Well, it certainly is. And it's awfully nice of Bobby Hamilton to give his driver, Joe Rutman, the, uh, the, the better truck or the proven truck anyway. Not necessarily the better truck, but the proven truck. Great overhead shot here of Bobby Hampton leading Joe Rutman. Both trucks, they looked identical. A little bit of different tape on the front of the trucks, but uh, Ted Musgrave hanging right in in the number one Mopar Dodge. All right, today's aerial coverage being provided by the Monster.com Blimp Trump. Monster.com is the world's leading online career resource. Monster.com, job good, life good. Thanks to the fine folks at Monster.com flying above Martinsville Speedway, giving us these uh, beautiful aerial shots of this historic half-mile racetrack here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. Morgan Shepard's uh, number 21 truck has gone behind the wall. Morgan, a five-time winner here at Martinsville Speedway, won his inaugural Winston Cup uh, event here in 1981. Also won twice in the Bush Grand National Series, and twice in, the, in what was called the old NASCAR Sportsman Series. That is Morgan's own, own truck right there. He has purchased that truck. Doug George, an accomplished crew chief and driver, is helping him out this weekend. All right, we're moving in on the 50 lap mark of 250. Thus far, 37 laps are complete. Hamilton and Ruffin are the top two. Back in a moment. Speedway in Virginia. I'm Jerry Punch along with Phil Parsons, Amy East, and Ray Dunlap bringing you live coverage of the Advance Auto Parts 250 from here in historic Virginia, Martinsville Speedway. Pretty good battle brewing here back for position. That is Kenny Schrader in ninth spot, and right behind him is the big white truck of Randy Tolles, but that's the Renzi Motorsports. Pretty interesting story. It certainly is, Jerry. They, you know, we talked about they, they couldn't figure out how what, what kind of coverage they were getting during these races so somebody had an idea it might have been even even Randy that said hey let's put something on the truck we you know we took they joked about it being a big white truck because the truck was white with nothing on it so they said they put let's put the big white truck on the side and on the hood of the truck and so it's been the, it's been a great great fun and see on the deck lid they got the little guy they, they little cartoon figure that they're calling him Ray and they got a picture of the Italian flag because the Renzi's on the truck are, are very uh, proud of their Italian heritage. And it says, Il Monstro Bianco, which means the white monster. They are looking for a sponsorship, but until they find one, it becomes the great, the big white truck. I'm glad you did the Italian translation because uh, <laughs> I, Ed Renzi quizzed me on that today and I couldn't get it. Ah, a lot, a lot of fun there for the Renzi team. Randy told them. Let's check in uh, down with Amy, who's caught up with a former Martinsville winner. That's right, Jerry. Back in 81, he won a cup race here. You're on the top 10 list of all-time winners for this track, but not your day today, Morgan. What happened? Well, uh, our Ford truck was running a little bit hot. It got up about 260, so uh, we just brought it in. I was passing a 31 truck there, and he rubbed me in the wall twice, but uh, we need a sponsor for this thing so we can continue to race. You heard, you guys. He needs some money so that he can come back and race with us some more this year. Well, we'd love to have Morgan Shepard come back on. As you said, Phil, he owns that. He bought that truck, and so he's hoping to run some more NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series events. Got his very first Winston Cup victory here, driving a Pontiac for Cliff Stewart back in 1981. Battle for position, Rick Crawford, uh, the Milwaukee Tools uh, Ford for Crawford. He is a former winner here in all pro competition. And Ricky Hendrick in the GMAC Chevrolet. Ricky struggling a little bit here. Looks like the truck isn't quite uh, handling as well as he would like. No, it really isn't. I've been watching Ricky. He's not uh, been not moving forward like I thought. Rick Crawford, who was actually behind him, has been able to work, uh, work up a side of him and probably will go ahead and complete the pass. And the number 19, that is Ricky Sanders. Son of a short track ace and former Winston Cup competitor Ronnie Sanders, a trucktricks.com machine. That Ford is uh, tagged the wall, and it will bring out caution number two here on lap number 50. And now we may see some pit strategy unfold as you see uh, that, that truck rolling very slowly with the right side of it pancaked and somewhat flat. 
So we can show the folks at home what happened a moment ago to Ricky Sanders, a 34-year-old from Georgia. Looks like he was way up high out of the groove. Looks like he might have had a problem, might have run over something to cut a tire down because he went up and pancaked the right side of the truck. Uh, fortunately, nobody else involved. That truck owned by Jim Murphy, trucktricks.com, the sponsor. They make uh, truck accessories like brush guards and front uh, grill guards. They'll come in and get some service from Tom Broom, Jim Murphy, and the crew there. As uh, now we wait and see if others will pit, possibly. Ronnie Hornaday, you saw him pull by the 94 truck. Yeah, he is the son of Ron Hornaday Jr., the two-time NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series champion, Lucas Oil Chevrolet for Ronnie Hornaday. You notice the green uniform is pitting the car. That, those are Ron Hornaday Sr.'s pit crew, AJ-14, the Conseco team. They also have their engine, uh, one of AJ Foyt's engine in this truck again, like they did at Homestead. And here's Billy Bigley, the 75 truck. That is the Spears manufacturing truck. He is one of the uh, pre-race favorites today. Billy out of Naples, Florida, headed down to Mark Blessing and Company, where Ray Dunlap is standing by. Ray? Well, Jerry, I'm a little bit surprised to see them coming in with all those leaders staying out. But Billy said we got to put some right side tires on this thing and get a feel for what it'll do. Once they know that happens, they know that then they'll have a better feel how that truck goes. They are going to go one round on the wedge over here on the right side, I think. And Billy said the, the truck was just way too loose in the center of the corner. And again, I'm a little bit surprised they came in this early. We can probably imagine that some of these guys don't have to come in until like a lap 150. And we're just at lap 52 right now. So they, uh, I don't know, they're taking a look here on the left rear. Now they're going to jack the truck up on the left side here. So uh, apparently some sort of a problem on the rear end here they're trying to take a look at. And maybe that is why the truck didn't feel good out on the racetrack. Uh, no communication on the radio here yet of what the problem is. And Ray, unfortunately, they will go a lap down as they bring the jack stands over. That is the truck that Bigley had a great run with at Homestead, was running second with 22 laps to go and cut a tire. Had a great run as well at a top 10 finish at Mason Marin. Well, it looks, Jerry, like it is in the drivetrain. It might be something on the rear end. They're just saying that it has a real bad vibration, what Billy said so far. So uh, the, the wheels were tight, so no problem there as we get ready to go back to green flag racing. All right, thanks, Ray. Restart here on lap 55. Caution out for four laps. Second caution flag today. And once again, Bobby Hamilton, Joe Rubin will lead him down. Ted Musgrave is third. Terry Cook, the first non-Mopar product out there. He's in a Ford. He's in four spot. Then comes Scott Riggs in a Dodge. Then Sprague, then Corelli. I saw Terry, see Terry Cook on the outside of a lap truck, Jason White right there. That's how difficult it is to pass at this racetrack. Some of the crew chiefs said that these tires. You watch Terry wave his hand at him, say, hey, give me a break. But he's not going to do that. It looks like Terry hasn't cleared right now. Can pull down in front of him. And now Scott Riggs has to contend with the lap truck of Jason White. Jason White out of Powhatan, Virginia, driving for David Hodson, Impact Motorsports. Right along with Scott Riggs. Team ASA CarQuest Dodge. Current points leader. Has not won yet this year. We're talking about Riggs, but he's had a finish of third at Daytona, fourth at Homestead, and fifth at Mason Moran. Here comes Jack Sprague, the 24th truck, net zero on the outside of the 86. You, you can hear the engines of these guys. They're turning, some, some of them are turning as much as 9,500 RPMs. Wow, it's a lot of strain on that valve train, and now Sprague will try to go by. Corelli will try to make the move by Jensen White. Jason making only his second ever NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series start. Started at Mason Marin. Pretty good luck here. Finished 16th. Driving for David Hodson. He said Jason White is giving the guys a lot of room on the outside, but it's just right now the outside is a tough way to go. He doesn't want to just stop and let the whole field go by. So he's, he's, he's trying to give the guys room, which he is, but he also wants to maintain some speed. Let's show you. What happened a moment ago with the Terry Cook trying to get by Jason White? Now look at Terry Cook's window. Yeah, he's waving at him, said, Jason, please give me a break. Let me get down in the corner in front of you. That's the old-fashioned turn signal. Exactly. And Jason's sliding up the racetrack. And Terry able to make the pass. Meanwhile, they are still chasing a pair of Dana Dodges. What a surprise. And a Dana Dodge is leading here at Martinsville Speedway. Back with more live green flag action in a moment.
NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series action exclusively on the worldwide leader ESPN, bringing you live coverage from historic Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. That's the look back from our leader's truck, Bobby Hamilton, looking back at his uh, teammate, Joe Rutman. They are running first and second. Ted Musgrave back in third. That's the Mopar Dodge. Musgrave has won two out of three events this year. The last two stops at Bakersfield three weeks ago and in Homestead down in South Florida. Bobby Hamilton, that Winston Cup winner here at Martinsville Speedway in the spring of 98. Now, one of the early contenders we thought might be one of the possible favorites today is behind the wall, right, Ray? Well, he sure is, Jerry, and that's Billy Bigley. They are uh, working on the rear end. Billy, sounds like it's in the drive chain. Do you know what the problem is yet? I really don't, Ray. Something, when we had that caution there just a few laps ago, something rattled real bad when we got off the gas. I don't really know. I mean, Spears Motorsports teams are going to do a good job trying to get us back out there, get some points. You know, but it was a tough day. I mean, we were running in the top 10 and had a really good truck. I just want to say hi to my wife and kids and my mom back at home. They weren't able to be here. But um, these guys aren't going to give up. We're going to get back out. Okay, that's Billy Bigley. They're going to put a new rear end in the number 75. Now to Amy East. Bobby Dodder started in a solid 16th, but they're under the hood early. Bobby, what happened? Well, we were expecting a really good run today, and the People Against Drugs Chevy truck was running really good just holding our own and all of a sudden the motor just started making funny noise and maybe broke a rocker arm or something but we're gonna try to fix it get back out for some points the crew just told me it is indeed a broken rocker arm tough break for Bobby Dodder by the way Gene Christensen owns that truck and if you wonder why they got people against drugs that's his foundation he said I want to be able to reach out to America's youth and tell them no drugs no gangs and he's doing it on his own he is a real estate developer in in Dallas got the trouble on Ted Musgrave there's Musgrave going to the pits. And who has won two in a row. And this is an unscheduled stop under green as Ted Musgrave will bring that one truck down pit road to Fred Wanky and the Ultra Motorsports crew. Let's go down the race. Is this scheduled, Ray? I don't know what's going on here, Jerry. Uh, nothing's been said on the radio. Just trying to look around here and find out what the problem is. I'll get right back to you as soon as I know. Yeah, th there's no way this is a scheduled pit stop. You know, at uh, Martinsville, you're going to get a lot of caution flags. This is not a scheduled pit stop. No, they would never schedule a pit stop under the green flag here. You lose so many laps and with so many caution flags at Martinsville. Apparently, they are going to look uh, open the hood on the front of the truck there. Tough right for Ted Musgrave. They actually put the pins back in the hood. They're not going to open the hood, but, uh, you know, we talk about 9,500 RPMs, Jerry, and that, that, that can definitely take the toll on something. Well, Joey Arrington has built some built some awfully strong engines, and the Dodge, the new P7 Dodge engine has been bulletproof for the last two events in which Musgrave has won, but it may, uh, well, we won't speculate that that's what the problem is, but Musgrave certainly would be on there sitting still right now if it was something else they can fix very quickly. You know, I saw Fred Wanky looking at the rear end of the truck. He may have a very similar problem as to what uh, we saw earlier from Billy Bigley. Ray, do you have more? You better bet. Phil's right on the mark. The exact same thing. Broken rear end gear. So we have our second truck behind the wall working on a rear end gear. Unbelievable as Musgrave has truly been the dominant force here throughout the course of the weekend. Well, no three in a row for Musgrave. And uh, he came in third in points, or tied for third in points with Hendrick and Sprague. And he will go behind the wall with a broken rear end. Tough break. Uh, the first major problem for that team this year. Musgrave had a little bit of a problem with the water pump at Daytona, finished 22nd, but otherwise he's won the last two and will not make it three in a row today. Still have a pair of Dana Dodges up front with Bobby Hamilton and Joe Rupp, a four in the 18. Terry Cook hanging in there in third. Here are the drivers who have pulled off the trifecta a year ago. Greg Biffle did it, Texas, Kentucky, and Watkins Rim. Ron Hornaday, the two-time champion, did it in Milwaukee, Louisville, and Colorado in 97. And Mike Skinner, Tucson, Colorado, and Topeka. And Musgrave was bidding to become the fourth driver to win three in a row, but it's not going to happen. We are closing in on 80 laps of 250 as Ted climbs out of his boat car dodge. Back with more in a moment. Musgrave behind the wall, Ted. Usually we hear about brake problems when we're at Martinsville, but you're the second truck with a rear end gear problem. I guess I didn't know anybody else had a problem, but that's exactly what happened. It's a broken rear end gear. The truck was pretty good. I just paced it myself, you know, because I didn't want to burn the brakes up. We'll get it back out, you know. Nothing else is wrong, but there goes my points. Did it give you any indication it was going? Yeah, it did. I told the guys there that it was starting to change vibration, and they uh, just 
I mean, what are you going to do? You know, you just had to keep going. But sure enough, it broke. And um, like I said, the guys, will, as long as they don't hurt themselves, we'll fix it and get back out. I have a feeling these guys will be back out on the track as the caution is now out as the 73 truck has made contact over in turn number two. Exactly right. Jason Small, the 21-year-old driver from Bakersfield, California, former Winston West Rookie of the Year, has come into contact with the concrete, bringing out caution for the third time today here on lap number 86. And that means the leaders will head for pit road for the first time, the first uh, of possibly two pit stops today. Here come the leaders. Let's go down to Amy East. Well, Jack Sprague has been screaming tight this entire race, so what the Net Zero team plans to do is give him right side tires, go up on the track bar, and also increase the air pressure in that right rear tire. Now, Jack Sprague is just now hitting the pit for the crew to do their work. While that's happening, the two truck of Scott Sprague is going to also take right side tires and make a track bar adjustment. You see the pit exit the pit road right there. It's 10 feet wider than it was last year. They had a lot of trouble. <laughs> and again, we have two Dana Dodges together leaving the pits. Yeah, give a call to Clay Campbell and all those crews widening pit road by some 10 feet. They added concession stands. They added grandstands here to this beautiful facility. And there is Bobby Hamilton, Ricky Hendrick, Rick Crawford. There's Refner, Jimmy Hensley. And a little bit of contact coming out of the pits between Terry Cook and Scott Riggs. There's Cook pulling out. Here comes Riggs and a meeting of the fenders. Pretty good contact right there. You know, the guys rely on the fenders for front downforce, so uh, they may need to come back in to look at those. I'm, I'm not sure. Terry does, Terry's doesn't look too bad from that angle. We could not see Scott's from that angle. And there's Bobby Hamilton taking a cold drink inside his Dana Dodge. Let's check back with Ray. Well, absolutely no chassis changes for either of the Dana Dodges, but both of them went with right side tires. And uh, Joe Rubman came on and said, this truck is just great, don't even touch it. So right side tires for both the four and the 18. And once again, we are under caution for the third time today. Jason Small out of Bakersfield, California. As you look at Joe Rubman's Dana Dodge, it's been on and off pit road. They took on uh, tires, two tires. And there is damage to Scott Riggs' left front fender. We'll check in with their crew with Timmy Cahoot to see how bad that's going to affect the truck. When we come back to Martinsville in a moment. You know it. For ESPN, the worldwide leader, the exclusive home of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, all 24 events here in the year 2001. Check in the Scott Riggs pits quickly with Amy. There was indeed some left front fender damage with the Sawzall. They removed the piece, and there was also one that was really hung up on the support from the uh, front nose. So it was a little bit longer stop than what they anticipated, but he's back out running. Scott Riggs, our points leader. A little bit of damage on his uh, Team ASC Cart West Dodge. We go back to the green flag being waved against again by Ryan Selby. Got a crash right in front stretch. And a lot of trucks heavily damaged on the restart. Tolzma gets it from the front and the rear. Chuck Hosfeld's involved. Kenny Schrader is involved. There's Larry Gunzelman in the white and the red truck, the 63 truck. Michael Dawkins, 31. To, uh, to I think that was really caused by the 31 truck. You see Chuck Hosfeld in the 50 truck with a tremendous amount of damage. The 31 truck never came up to speed, and that just created a, a, a traffic jam for everybody else. Well, caution flag number four. Looks like Tolzma has pretty heavy damage. The 81 of Nathan Bucky also pretty heavy damage on the front and the rear. Here is Kenny Schrader's Federated Auto Parts. They're going to need to go to Federated and get some auto parts there. On the front of that one, uh, heavy damage for Kenny Schrader in the first of eight starts. He will climb out and take a look. I mean, these guys were just innocent victims. They were in line for the restart a few feet away. You see Schrader unbuckling. Let's take a look at what happened, what caused this. Again, I saw the 31 truck not come up to speed. It'll be on the right of your screen, and that just created a traffic jam. There's the 12 truck going by the 31 truck. The 81 gets in the back of the 63, the red truck, and then from then on, it's just a chain reaction. Schrader trying to get woed up there, and there was Tolzma behind him. Haas fell behind Tolzma. Another look at here. The 31 truck is on the inside. He doesn't get up to speed, tries to get out of the way, then the 12 truck turns to try to go around him and gets into the 63 truck, turns him to the outside, right in front of Rick Corelli. Tough, tough break. Well, Jason Tom out of Ontario, Canada, making his very first NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series truck, right along with Kenny Schrader, saw what he saw. Boom! He tried, you heard him get in the throttle real hard, tr then tried to get woed when he saw something coming, and then just uh, wasn't enough time to do it. Kenny 
administrator has climbed out of his car talking to Kenny Wallace down there. Wayne Tarns from Goodyear there talking with Schrader and uh, Kenny says I don't know what happened. Good thing about Kenny is always able to get out with a smile on his face. Uh, I mean he nothing he could do. No, sure it wasn't. Well fourth caution flag today coming out on lap 94 a half a dozen trucks involved in a restart rumble here at Martinsville. We'll sort it out and come back with the green flag we hope again in just a moment. And Billy Bigley's short track experience paid off at Bakersfield. On the flip side, Roush dominated 2000 with Biffle and Bush, but Hoslong and Hosfeld got off to a rough start and they both struggled to crack the top 10. Bad luck has been in the promising season for Matt Crafton, and Willie T. Ribs hopes to turn around a disappointing start. And there are the Ray Bestest Rookie of the Year standings. Ricky Hendrick of 15 points over Quapple, Bigley, Hosfeld, and Hosley. There's Ribs, Hornaday, Gunzelman, David Donahue, and Matt Crafton. Willie T. Ribs did not qualify for the first time this year. And the Dodge and Chuck Hosfeld's woes continue, right, Amy? Well, tough for the rookie here on short, short track racing. They didn't think it at first, but now they know for sure they're going to have to change the radiator. A lot of front end damage. There is a hole in the radiator. All the water is out underneath the truck right now. So they have a costly stop, a quick fix, and then they'll try to get it back out. So Chuck Hosfeld's number 50 uh, Ford, by the way, they will have a new sponsor on board when they head uh, to St. Louis in a few weeks. Newell Rubbermaid will be a part of that. Sanford Office Products, Sharpie pins, level of lines. They'll put one of those names on there, but uh, so we got them all covered for when they get to St. Louis. There is Scott Briggs, our points leader, back on pit road. See that damage in the left front fender? That was in contact with Terry Cook on the previous pit stop. Previous caution flag. Tolsma's been on and off pit road, as has Corelli. Let's show you once again what happened on lap 94. The caution occurring on the restart here as they came out of turn four. You see the blue and the yellow truck, number 31 on the inside. They, he starts to take off. Something happens. He tries to get out of the way. The 12 truck tries to avoid him. Gets into Larry Gunzel on the red, number 63 truck, and that just creates a traffic jam. The guys are trying to get up to speed. They're in second gear, shifting to third gear, and all of a sudden they have to stop. So Schrader involved. Tolzma, Hosfeld, Gunzelman. Nathan Butke is behind the wall. And for you Bobby Dodder fans, he's coming back out. There's the four. And there's the Federated Auto Parts view of what happened a moment ago to bring out the caution flag. Great crowd on hand back at Martinsville Speedway enjoying our ESPN coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Roy Selby saying he'll have green flag next time by. Meanwhile, a number of trucks behind the wall included among those is Kenny Schrader. Let's check in with him, right? Well, Kenny, I, uh, I think you had a premonition that it was going to get ugly there for a bit, right? Well, I saw a red car come over, and <laughs> when I looked up and <laughs> track was blocked, I figured chances of making it through weren't real good. But the truck was good. You know, we made, we were too loose, made an adjustment. Long race here for these trucks. We, it was a lot of fun. Can't wait to come back and run again. When are we going to see you next? Uh, we're going to take the Federated Outports truck to St. Louis. Excellent. So a Schrader in St. Louis. What do you think of that, guys? That'll be awesome. Coming up in St. Louis, our next stop, uh, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Kenny will run eight times this year. They'll run ten times altogether. He and Lyndon Amick sharing that truck uh, for Ken Schrader Racing. As we are set for the restart here on lap 105. And no, they will call it off because they still want to check on some debris. Here are the drivers involved in the crash. Tolzma, who's back on the racetrack with some front end rear damage. Corelli has some front end damage. Michael Dockin behind the wall. Kenny Schrader is out. Chuck Hostel being repaired. Larry Gunzelman, front end rear damage. He's behind the wall. And Nathan Butke in the 81 uh, truck. He is also back behind the wall as they're working on his uh, fansteam.com Chevrolet. There's the left behind.com Chevy for Jimmy Hensley. Let's check on their strategy, Amy. Well, remembering Jimmy Hensley is standing in for the injured Randy McDonald. Jimmy, great here at Martinsville. They've decided with one of those wacky pit strategies to not pit again. He's going to go for it. Currently in ninth, Jimmy knows his way around this tricky half mile. He just may find another victory. That was Randy McDonald, the normal driver of that truck, and he was injured at Daytona, has three discs that may be operated on in the next week or so, so we may see Jimmy some more. In that truck, they had Steve Porton gave did a pretty good job with them out at Baker's. Don't they got a couple of good options to jump in the 72. You know, Jimmy Hensley has actually made two pit stops, so he does have all four fresher, fresher tires and the leaders who have only stopped once. 
Just past the 100 lap mark, 107 of 250 are complete here at Martinsville Speedway. The Advanced Auto Parts 250. Jack Sprague in the 24 truck trying to get by Jason White again. Uh, started on the inside lap, lap try. Jack definitely in contention here in the 150th race of the Craftsman Truck Series. He's not won here, but he's been awfully good at this racetrack. 19 career victories, looking for win number 20. And the truck he is driving is the one he won his very first race in. It is the oldest truck they own called Chucky. So Chucky won the first one in Phoenix back in 1996, going for win number 20 here in the 150th event for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. There's Travis Quapel right behind him in the 60 Cat Rental Truck. Yeah, we talked about him, about the rookies. Had a great run at Homestead, finished second, doing a great job here, fifth position. And there is Terry Cook, Sylvania, Ohio driver. Terry Cook has spent much of his life impressing people with his ability to get the most out of his equipment. We asked Terry, what it'll take to get back into victory lane. He's our one to watch. Any day that you can roll off the trailer for practice and be consistently fast and just have a little bit of racing luck on your side. You always got to have a little bit of luck, whether it's calling the right pit stop sequences or just racing luck on the track, not getting caught up in an accident or something. But just being good for 200, 250 laps, whatever length the race is, and, and just being there at the end. And again, I think the consistency will take us to that point. Take a look at Terry Cook's stats. Uh, Short track careers, 39 starts, a win coming at Flemington back in 1998. Two poles, two top fives, top tens. Uh, for Kerry Cook, pretty good start this year for Cook, who is currently seventh in the points. All three starts, top ten finishes, sixth at Daytona, tenth at Homestead, seventh at Mesa Marin, and just nine points out of six spot behind Randy Tolsman, who's already been damaged on that restart a moment ago. Scott Riggs way up across the racetrack a moment ago in that Team ASC car quest off. Way out of shape. Looked like he was trying to get by Ronnie Horn today in the 94 truck and uh, got way out of the groove and uh, almost spun, but uh, fortunately regained control. Scott's another one that because of the damage, he's, he's had two pit stops at least. And he has four fresh tires. But typically, you know, usually, Jerry, we used to talk about Ford fresh tires as being a big advantage. Goodyear has such a good tire now that the give up is so little that it really doesn't doesn't hurt that much. You see him three wide. You see him in the speedy drive that they put down from that last accident. That's what happened. He was, he was going by on the outside, got on the outside of Lance Hooper. Great save by uh, Scott Riggs. Nice catch by Scott. Our points that are here. talking about the tires. I've had Ray Stock as the crew chief for, for Rick Crawford said this is the best tire Goodyear's ever made. It doesn't wear out and it doesn't give up. Said it's the absolute best thing Goodyear's ever put on a race car or race truck anywhere. They're very, very pleased with it. We're continuing on the Mopar Dodge, right, Ray? Well, it sure is, Jerry. You know, normally what they would do is just pull the rear end gear out and put an entire new assembly in just as the rear end gear. But the problem was it totally locked up and they couldn't take the axles out to remove the rear end gear. So they've had to put an entire new assembly in there. An all new rear end gear and the whole rear axle and the whole piece back there. So this has taken a lot longer time for the number one truck than they expected it would do and the laps just keep ticking away. All right, if you just joined us, that is Ted Musgrave who had trouble and Musgrave behind the wall after winning two in a row. Still working on getting that truck back out, but meanwhile, no trouble at all for Winston Cup veteran Bobby Hamilton. He has led 107 laps thus far, and he continues to lead here after 116 are complete. Jimmy Hensley back on pit road. Problems the left behind dot com machine on pit road as caution comes out for the fifth time. Amy, what's the problem? Broken rear end gear. That is the fourth one we've seen today. The 90, the 46, the 1, and now the 72 of Jimmy Hensley has a broken rear end gear. Very tough on rear ends here, isn't it, Phil? Well, Amy, it certainly is. You know, we talked about it earlier. The thing is, these guys have more horsepower than they had last year. They're running a gear that's somewhat questionable because of the number of teeth on the pinion. So if there's just a small amount of teeth on the pinion, it's a 650 gear. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these guys, if not all of them, are breaking that 650 gear. Well, folks, there have been 339 events, races run here at Martinsville Speedway dating back to 1947. I'm going to ask you a trivia question. Who was the winningest driver in the history of Martinsville Speedway? Think about it. The answer might not be what you think it is. We'll let you know when we come back. Under caution for the fifth time. Now think about the trivia. Back in a moment. 
know. Back to I'm Jerry Punch along with Phil Parsons, Ray Dunlap, and Amy East bringing you coverage of the Advance Auto Parts 250. 123 laps to go. Aradena Dodge is up front. There are the two leaders thus far today. Bobby Hamilton, the four Dodge, is leading with Joe Rubin in the 18 Dodge. Uh, they are both owned by Bobby Hamilton. Terry Cook having a great run back in third spot in the K Automotive Ford. Jack Sprague is back in the fourth position, and Travis Quapel is fifth. Well, one guy we thought might have a shot today because of his history here, Amy, but he's behind the wall. We sure did, Jerry, and we know it's a rear end gear, but you're a truck series veteran. We enjoyed seeing you back. The question has to be, were you having fun out there, Jimmy? Yeah, we was that pretty good fun today, Amy. Uh, you know, the uh, Left Behind.com Chevrolet was uh, was running okay. You know, we weren't up there really challenging uh, those Dodges, you know, for the lead. But uh, we was back there in the hunt. Uh, we'd already made our last pit stop. And uh, I think the other guys had to stop. And could have been interested. One of Virginia's favorites, Jimmy Hensley, is going to change the gear, and then he'll be back out there. Love to see Jimmy back in that truck again while Randy McDonald is recovering because uh, uh, Jimmy, a very, very big fan favorite here in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. A true gentleman. I enjoyed racing against Jim with Jimmy Hensley for a long time. There is six, seventh, and eighth spot. We're talking about Riggs, our points leader in sixth spot. Rick Crawford back in seventh. Remember Crawford a winner here and had also a runner up here in the All Pro Series back in the uh, early 90s. There is Riggs and the two Crawford, the Milwaukee Electric Tools, and Brian Repner, pretty good, quietly a pretty good run in the Menard Chevrolet. It is. You know, we see some damage on the right rear of Rick Crawford's 14 Milwaukee Electric Tool uh, Ford, but uh, doesn't seem to be hurting him much. He's, he's really uh, advanced, started 23rd, has steadily moved his way up towards the top 10, and now is running seven. Rock and Ray Stonk as his crew chief uh, told me uh, earlier today that uh, they thought they would be a factor here, and indeed they might. Because Rick Crawford knows how important it is to save your tires and be very, very careful with that truck. And so he's got all the experience here in all pro trucking. And no matter what you drive, this racetrack is where you really need the experience. I mean, what, whatever it's in. That's exactly right. What, whatever kind of racing, you know, we, Willie T. Ribs came here and tested with a Bush car. Unfortunately, he didn't make the race, but he just needed to get some laps under his belt. It helped him. He didn't quite make the race, but he didn't miss by much. He'll be better when he goes to another race. A little bit of smoke out of Lance Hooper in the uh, time critical freight Ford. Hooper having uh, that good run at Mesa Marin, finishing 12th at Mesa Marin, 15th at Homestead. Uh, hoping he can finish here today, but the former Winston West and Southwest Series champion showing a little bit of smoke, and now the engine apparently going sour as he slows down on the racetrack up the back straightaway. Tough break for the 33-year-old Palmdale, California driver, Lance Hooper, who now heads for pit road. I talked to Lance earlier this morning, and he said these, this engine is one that they had purchased from Kale Yarborough's Winston Cup team, ex-Winston Cup team. So they bought three engines for that for the for the truck flat tap and cam but uh, the, the, the rpms get it there's travis quapel who's currently being shown in fifth position the the rookie driver impressive rookie driver out of janesville wisconsin dropping from mike addington cat rental stores rick wren as uh, the heating up a little bit for fourth fifth and sixth spot let's check in that pits with amy Travis also has an impressive crew on that last round of pit stops. They gained four positions. Now, had they not, he would have been right in the middle of that traffic jam that we saw collect Ken Schrader and others. So Rick Wren, very happy with his crew, very happy with his driver. He's just complaining of a slightly loose condition right now. Travis Quapel having a great ride for his first visit here at Martinsville. And Amy, exactly as you were saying a moment ago, he was loose. The truck slipped up the racetrack and opened the door for Scott Ridge to take the fifth spot away from him. So a great call, Amy, on what's happening down in the cat rental pit for Travis Plum. Again, Doc, Scott Riggs has four fresh tires. Battle for 10th position between Ricky Hendrick and Randy Tolzma. As much damage as Randy has, he's still moving towards the front. Big, big white truck is a big battered white truck right now for Tolzma and company. Is Ed Renzi in a... Got to be awfully pleased with the, with the run Tolton was given a truck that's both been up in the front end we're in. Looks like that car Harry Gant won with a few years ago up here at Winston Cup. We've got a spin. Larry Gunzelman has turned around between one and two right in front of the leaders. Gunzelman involved in the incident on the restart back on lap 94. That's what produced the damage on his truck, and uh, he will try to get it righted, but it will bring out caution number six on the day. Gunzelman, the rookie competitor here, former Winston West campaigner. Ten years at Winston West, three wins out in Winston West competition. 36-year-old driver from Belfair, Washington, driving for Mike Mittler out of St. Louis, Missouri. 
Bringing out caution number six. Here's a replay. You see uh, go down in the inside. Came down, did not know that Rick Corelli was coming on the inside. Came down and a little bit of contact around he went, but uh, some, some significant damage to the left rear quarter of Rick Corelli's truck. That's the Waterloo, Waterloo Tool Ford. All right, here come the leaders on pit road. Amy, headed for you. Well, young Travis Quaffle will now see what this impressive crew can do for him. If he gains four spots here, he could be running in the top two as he gets left by tires. And it will make a chassis adjustment. Ray Dunlap. No chassis change for Bobby Hamilton, but once again, they'll do right side tires like they did last time. And on the number 29, they took left's left time. This time, it'll be right side tires for Terry Cook and his Ford. I would expect, Phil, from what people were telling us in the pits today, that may be the last stop we, they will make. A lot of the drivers said, we want to make our final stop with just over 100 laps to go, so we have plenty of time to work traffic. And right now, with lap 142 showing, we have 108 laps left in this one. That might be the last time the leaders at least pit. It certainly may. And, and we talked about Scott Riggs having the four fresh tires because of the damage. He had to come back in the pits. He's now leading. He stayed out during this caution play. On board with uh, Joe Rutman. Ray, how about his pit stop? Well, they did exactly the same thing Bobby Hamilton came in and did. Uh, well, no, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. They did rights on the number four truck, but they did lefts on the number 18 that time. So a little bit of a different strategy here from the two fastest trucks. Rights for Hamilton, which is what he took last time. But for Rutman, it was left side tires this time. Okay, thanks, Ray. We asked you earlier in our trivia question, who is the winningest driver in Martinsville Speedway history? 339 races. I bet a lot of you at home said, how about the king, Richard Petty? Well, you'd be wrong. It was Ray Hendrick, Mr. Modified, and flying number 11, Richard Petty, was second. I'm play riding along with Scott Riggs, who's our points leader and also our race leader. As there's some contact with trucks all over the racetrack, beating and banging Martinsville style. They're... Uh, Rick Crawford just got punted on the inside as Milwaukee Electric Tools uh, Ford up across the racetrack. He was making, trying to make a pass out in turn one and got, uh, got hit. Look at the damage on the left side, uh, that left front fender and bumper. Rick did a great job of saving that truck from going right into the wall. Sure did. We talked, here's, here's what happened on the outside of Travis Quaffle. Now, Matt Crafton in the 88 yellow truck on the inside, three wide. Well, it was a Quaffle sandwich with uh, Three Off guys on the outside. Three guys did a great job saving those trucks. All three of them were out of shape, and, uh, and they all continued on. They did Crafton, Waffle, and Crawford. There's the guy they're chasing, Scott Riggs. We talked about Ricky Hendrick having trouble, not running as well as we thought earlier. He's in second position, Jerry. Ricky Hendrick back in second spot. If you look behind Hendrick, that is the one of uh, Musgrave back on the racetrack, the 51 now in the pits. Of course, that is uh, Coy Gibbs, who started back in 33rd position. He's gone behind the wall after he did not qualify in his MDNA Chevrolet. They purchased that ride from Rick Ware. Well, what about the pit strategy now for Scott Riggs and his crew chief, Timmy Cahoot? What are they going to do, Amy? Well, let's ask him, Jerry. What are you going to do, Timmy? Are you going to stay out or are you going to pit again? Uh, we're staying out the rest of the day. Last time we pitted, we got wounded in here on pit road, so we're done for the day. Uh, the truck's a little crippled right now, but we're pretty quick, so we'll just see how it stays. Hopefully stay green. How's the tire wear? Good? The tire wear's perfect, so we had nothing to gain by coming in. You guys heard it. They're going for the win. We might mention that Jimmy Smith is, see that, see says Child Help USA? You know, for a child, his, his truck owner, Jimmy Smith, who has not missed a single race, is not here today, but for a very good cause. He is chairman of a, of a golf tournament that raises money to help abuse children out in California. And Jimmy said they all would be watching out in California. So, hello, Jimmy, your truck's running awfully well. Best of luck on the fundraiser. There's Terry Cook, the 29, the K Automotive Ford. Having a great run. How about Nathan Hosla? Having a good run for the 99. Haven't talked a lot about him. Nathan stayed out of trouble. Stayed up in the top 10. Another rookie, Travis Quaffle, on the 60 truck, going on the outside of Nathan. We talked about Nathan. Neither Nathan or Hostel had a top 10 finish this year, and the crew said, today, Nathan, is your day, baby. Top 10, maybe top 5. Quaffle avoids the uh, truck another, of Lance Hooper. Another close call. Looks like Lance Hooper's engine's finally going to give up the ghost and uh, created a tough situation right there, but fortunately, everybody got through. Quaffle handled it, handled it like a veteran and not keeping his truck from spinning. There's Matt Crafton now trying to 
avoid some contact with Randy Tolson, Brian Repter, the Menard Chevrolet right in front of them. That is for position. They are 9th, 10th, and 11th, all on the lead lap. We haven't said a lot about Matt Crafton. He's having a great run. He's had a good truck at Homestead, had a little bit of trouble, and, uh, but he's done a great job here. And Matt Crafton took this truck to Sandusky, Ohio, where their shop is, and, and ran the track at Sandusky, but there was dirt piled up in one end when they were getting ready to make the motocross track, so he had to run that in turn one and run around the dirt pile to test his truck. <laughs> so that, that dirt pile paid off for uh, Matt Crafton. But with so, in some of these situations they've got into, that dirt, that dirt helped uh, racing his help. Here is Tolzma on the inside of Crafton. Uh, Tolzma, two-time winner in NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series competition, winning a year ago at Nashville, Tennessee. Crafton, of course, the reigning Southwest Series champion. And Bobby Hamilton scoops right on by. Joe Rutman for the lead. Reassumes the lead here on lap 160. So 90 laps to go. I'm sorry, third spot. As uh, Riggs is still the leader, they are, that is for third position. We didn't talk about it. You know, uh, Joe Rutman beat out Bobby Hamilton, his truck owner, out of the pits. But he, uh, Ray mentioned earlier Bobby Hamilton got right side tires. Joe Rutman got left side tires. You can change left side tires faster than you can right side tires because the guys don't have that as far to go. So that's why he beat him out of the pits. Now Bobby just passed him back for third position, and now they're headed towards the front. There's the Dana Dodge of Joe Rutman. There is Scott Riggs. From nearby Bahama, North Carolina, just outside of Durham, North Carolina, there is Ricky Hedrick. Birthday boy this week. He turned 21 years of age just past Monday. Happy birthday to Ricky Hendrick. His mom and dad, Rick and Linda Hendrick, have been at every single NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series event. They're enjoying this experience with their uh, their son. They have, they have two children. They have an older daughter. And, of course, Ricky's the youngest of the younger of the two. Speaking of Ricky Hendrick, let's check in his pits with Amy. Well, the obvious question to them also was if they would pit again, and indeed they are going to have to. They will need fuel to make it the rest of the way, and also some fresh right side rubber. Hoping for that caution around lap 200 would work well for them, but as you guys know, we can't plan caution, so they'll play out their strategy for the rest of the race. And a moment ago, you got a glimpse of the one truck. That is the uh, Mopar Dodge of Ted Musgrave. He, is, he had gone behind the wall with a rear end problem, and... Uh, has come back on the racetrack and now being shown till back about 75 laps behind. He's completed 88 laps and the leader has completed 163 laps, so he's about 75 laps behind. Back in 30th position for Musgrave. And Bobby Hamilton, uh, who dominated a year ago, leading 179 laps. And we'll you know, see if he's closing in a little bit on Rick. Actually, it's pretty stable for he and Riggs. And what about uh, their pit strategy, Ray? Well, no need to pit again, Jerry, for either Bobby Hamilton or Joe Rutman as far as tires or fuel, unless there's a big accident and they run over debris or something like that. Both crew chiefs said they're ready to go the distance here. And it uh, looks to me like that interval might be closing up a little bit. And I, I got to believe that Hamilton's got the stuff to get back up there and race with Scott Riggs. Dodge showing the way at Chevrolet and two more Dodges and a Ford. That's the top five. Riggs, Hendrick, Hamilton, Ruffin, and Sprague after 166 laps. Back in a moment. This is our leader, Scott Riggs, the team ASC Dodge. We have a new second place runner now. Bobby Hamilton and Joe Ruffin have got by Ricky Hendrick. They're now running second and third with the Dana Dodges. There you see them right there, the two blue Dodges. There's a battle brewing for position there. That would be for fourth position as Hendrick and Sprague are battling for the spot. Terry Cook there in the 29 Ford, the K Automotive Ford, uh, right behind Jack Sprague, fifth and sixth position right there. Ricky Hendrick just ahead of Jack Sprague in fourth position. And that's zero Chevrolet for Sprague. There is Terry Cook. There are many talented people who work behind the scenes and behind the wall in this NASCAR series. Let's hear from one in this weekend's edition of the Craftsman Pit Profile. While racing is a strong family-oriented sport for Jack Sprague and brother Jason Pash, 150 consecutive races together. You aid and assist Jack from the spotter stand. Was this the family plan, 150 races together? A uh, family plan... 
Yes. You know, we've been together since I was 12 years old and 150 races, two championships, maybe not 150 to go. Well, Craftsman has given both brothers a great racing milestone here at their 150th. So it's a family affair. Talk about NASCAR racing being a family sport. There is a Jason Pash, and he's spotting for his older brother, Jack Sprague. 150 consecutive starts in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, and now he's getting a challenge from Terry Cook for position. Terry's been working on him lap after lap after lap. You know, we talked about how difficult it is to pass at this racetrack. But it looks like, like right now Terry has a better truck, but he just cannot get by. See, you see Travis Quapple looking on the outside of Terry. And when he, if he makes a move to get by Jack Sprague on the inside, you may see Travis Quapple go to the outside. Terry Cook has been the highest finishing forward in two of the three events that we've had this year. So they've had good, uh, good runs at all three events. In fact, three top ten finishes for Terry Cook out of Sylvania, Ohio. 349 drivers have taken the green flag. How about that? In NASCAR Craftsman Trucks. Fourth position here, a couple of teammates. Uh, that is Ricky Hendrick, the rookie driver. He sprang back whoa. down and gets tagged from behind by Quapple and goes around 360. Caution flag is out. You saw Jack get a little bit sideways there. Travis Quapple, certainly unintentional, got into the left rear quarter panel and around he went. Just making some funny noise, Jerry. Looked like the, the truck has hesitated a little bit as he got a little sideways coming out. He's pulling up on his teammate Ricky Hendrick, and he, it's almost as if he either hesitated or the, or the truck got loose or something, but Quapple were right behind him. Here we see another look at it. You see the truck, you see Jack got a little bit sideways, turned turn back to the left to try to catch it. Travis got to his left rear quarter and around he went. But Jack kept it running. Now take a look from Sprague's roof camera. You see you spin around, there goes Quapple and Cook by. That noise we were talking about, that happened in the corner. So I think, I think what happened was he didn't go. This thing started making noise. It would not go. That's why Travis ran into the back of him. It looked like he just all of a sudden sputtered and stopped. Yeah, it hesitated there. The speed shop there, we see, uh, again, uh, a little bit late on the contact. But uh, I'd say, uh, I don't know if it maybe a drivetrain situation. Uh, tough break for Jack Sprague, trying to get his 20th career victory and his 150th start, bringing out caution number seven, that contact caution coming out on lap 191. There's the 18 truck. Scott Riggs hated to see this caution flag come out. Here comes see. Joe Ruffman down pit road in one of the Dana Dodges. That's a bit of a surprise. We did not expect to see them on pit road anymore. We'll see if possibly what Danny Rollins and Kip McCord and company will do for Joe. As Ray Dunlap is waiting on him. He's headed your way, Ray, at 35 miles an hour. Well, Jerry, Joe just came on the radio and says, we cannot win this race the way the truck is right now. So they're going to make an air pressure adjustment on the right rear and change right side tires here for the number 18. Joe hits the pit road here. Remember, you can only take two tires in any NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race, so they decided right is the way to go. They did rights on their first stop, lefts on the second. Now rights once again. It'll be interesting to see if this will help make the truck better and see if he can get through the traffic in these last 58 laps. All right, if you're scoring at home, 58 laps to go. Rutman makes a bright side tire change. Here is Sprague on pit road in front of you, Amy. Well, there is indeed some engine trouble for the Iron Man of the NASCAR Truck Series. His 150th start is not going to end in a victory. There seems to be no fuel pressure. They thought it might be a fuel-related problem. Now they are speculating it may be a broken rocker arm. He's going behind the wall. Well, Phil, you made the call earlier. The rear end gears and, of course, the drivetrain turning over 9,000 RPMs every lap, and sometimes uh, over 9,500 RPMs, uh, very tough for that valve train to withstand all that, all that punishment. It certainly is, and you go, you have such a spread, you go probably from 5,000 RPMs, maybe even a little less in the center of the corner, up to 9,500 RPMs at the end of the straightaway. This is probably as tough a racetrack on an engine as you can have. Kenny Bingham and Ronnie Revis built about as good an engine as you could find anywhere, so it's really surprising that they would have trouble with this truck of Jack Spray, but that may be the problem. We'll double check when we come back in just a moment. And NASCAR Miles 
Bell Stones. Happy 150th NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Look at the Winston Cup, May 9th, 54. Wilson, North Carolina, Buck Baker in the Bush Series, October of 86. Rockingham and Morgan Shepard won that race. Riding with Scott Riggs, went way right, turn one, down into turn three. He's able to stay. He had a lap truck number 12 on the inside. Bobby Hamilton almost got by Scott Riggs and turned one and two on that restart. Scott probably had some debris on his tires, did not get him cleaned off very well, and uh, went way high. Bobby Hamilton jumps up on the outside. Wig truck wiggled, went to the outside. Travis Quaffle moved up on the inside. And Quaffle has the advantage in turn three. The rookie inside the veteran Hamilton. Quaffle's truck sputters a little bit. Hamilton will get him by a truck link. Now two truck links here on the front stretch. Riggs a leader. You're riding with Hamilton. That's Quaffle, the Cat Reynolds Chevrolet you're looking at. Right behind Quaffle would be the 29 of Terry Cook. Great run from Brian Reffner. Reffner being shown back in fifth spot. Then Tolsma's damaged truck back in sixth. See Joe Ruffman on the outside, top of your screen on the outside of Randy Tolsma. He's got the two fresh right side tires. You know, the Jamie's pitting this late like Joe Rutman did is not the kiss of death that it could have been because because of the attrition rate, because of that big accident on the front stretch, there are not that many trucks in the lead lap. I think there's 12 trucks in the lead lap. Ronnie Hornaday's done a great job. He's in 12th position. So Joe Rutman did not have to restart the race from that far back. So the 18 truck on your screen, that is Joe Rutman. That's the guy we're talking about. Made the pit stop during the last caution flag on lap 191, 192. Two right side tires. Now he's being shown back up in the sixth position. Battling Reffner for fifth. Well, Jack Sprague has had to call it a day, apparently, Amy. He's back behind the wall. Yeah, Jerry, and, and while the crew works feverishly on the net zero, zero Platinum Chevrolet, spoke to Jack Sprague, and he said that, indeed, he did have the engine trouble prior to the contact with the 60 truck. No fault to Travis Quaffle for Jack Sprague's spin. Very tough, but they do know that there's a lot of trucks out there several laps down, and they know the big picture is the championship, and we have another spin out on the track. And that's Brian Reffner, who got a little bit of a tap, or got a significant tap from behind by Joe Rutman. Reffner was running in fifth spot, had a great run in the Menard Chevrolet, and uh, those fresh tires for Rutman, uh, and there is contact from behind, and that will bring out caution number eight here on lap 205. Joe had a good run on, on Brian coming down into turn one, was moving to the inside. Brian did not realize he was there, came down, and they made some contact. Uh, doesn't look like a great deal of damage to Brian's truck, so he, he got turned back around before he lost a lap, so he'll be back in contention here. Tough break, though, because he had worked his way all the way up to fourth position. Here we see it again. We see they just passed the start-finish line. Joe on the inside has a good run going. Brian, Brian comes down. Joe wasn't quite up to his rear tire, and around he went, but... Uh, Unfortunately, no more contact from Ted Musgrave, who did a great job getting woed there on the outside. Different, different angle from the onboard camera. Is there fault in an accident like that on the short track? I mean, it's really hard to say who could have been where, and it's almost like, uh, as, you, as you see Bobby, well, we'll wait a minute to answer that question in a moment. Here's Bobby Hamilton in the pits. Let's check in uh, with Ray Dunlap. Well, Jerry, we've documented all day here that Hamilton took the strategy of right side tires, right side tires. He just said, boy, these lefts are just too worn out. There's no way I'll make it to the finish. No chance to win with the truck as bad as it was. Now to Amy East. Brian Reffner's had an up and down weekend. They had an engine trouble in practice, didn't get a sticker run, qualified poorly, but they were running so well. He takes right side tires and they hope that those left sides are not flat spotted. Now Reffner was running, as, you, as Amy said, he had engine trouble, had a miss during, during qualifying, but had a great run going in fifth position. We'll show you again, here's the contact. Reffner is fifth, behind him is Reffner. Another view where Joe gets on the inside. He thought that Brian wanted him to go by on the outside. Brian left him a little room on the outside. Then Joe pulled at the inside. Was, you know, you ask if there was any, if there's any blame there. Well, you could say that maybe Joe Rutman shouldn't have stuck his nose in there, but he did. But uh, that, that's, that's racing. That's racing in Martinsville. Back in just a moment. Back to more NASCAR coverage on the worldwide leader ESPN live coverage of NASCAR Craftsman Truck Action coming your way from Martinsville Speedway. Back to green flag racing, Scott Rigg showing the way. Sophomore sensation, currently our point leader. How about that impressive rookie, Travis Quapp on the Cat Rental with Chevrolet. Coming to a half a car length back, and you got to give a call to Terry Cook. Unsponsored race car, the K Automotive team. 
Kate Keselowski, Ron and Bob Keselowski. What an effort for Terry Cook in that 29 truck. It certainly is, you know, but they, they have, they're racing under heavy hearts right now. They have a, one of their biggest fans who never missed watching a race. He taped all, every race, he taped 149 races. Arnold Pops Bowles, many he passed away March 31st at the age of 79. He's an honorary crew member of the Keselowski team. Came to the shop every night to help out in an unfortunate situation, but uh, they just want to, see, you know, give them their best and their prayers are with the family. They'd like, they'd like to win one for Pops today. Let's check in once again with Ray Dunlap. Well, Jerry, at the beginning of the race, we talked about all these different pitch strategies that people had. Terry Cook's strategy was left side tires first, then rights, then lefts. Well, so far, they've only done two pit stops. They did lefts and rights. So I said, well, are you guys going to pit one more time? Bob Keselowski, the crew chief, said, no way, baby. We're running in the top five. That strategy we had earlier went right out the window, just like I told you at the top of the show. It's when the cautions fall, determine your strategy. I think they tore up their notebook, Ray, just like you did when you <laughs> tore up that sheet of cardboard. Battle for sixth position to actually make it fifth spot. That is Tolsma's battered big white truck. They're trying to hold off Ricky Hendrick and Matt Crafton, both of which are trying to take the position away. Hendrick is, Hendrick is sixth and Crafton is seventh. And Tolsma involved in a restart incident. That's why both the front and back of his uh, Ed and Sam Renzi Chevrolet is battered in, and he's doing a pretty good job of making that truck pretty wide. He sure is. Ricky Hendrick do, doing a great job hanging in the outside. Matt Crafton, we haven't talked a whole lot about, has run well all day long. Matt Crafton never had been to this racetrack, never seen this racetrack before. A young man from the West Coast, reigning NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Series champion. Now he makes a move on the inside, takes a spot away from Ricky Hendrick. Slight bit of contact there. He just got in the back of Ricky just a little bit, enough to make his truck wiggle, got out of the groove, and got underneath him and made the pass. They all gather over there at Joe's place uh, near Tulare, California. Tulare, California to watch Matt Crafton. They're big, big fans of the Crafton family. Dad, Danny, Mom, Jeannie are here, of course, and they all gather around and watch ESPN and the NASCAR Crafton. They got to be jumping up and down watching uh, the young 24-year-old make a move now on Tolga for position. Meanwhile, back up front, Waffle moving in on the leader. There is a challenge for third position. Joe Rubin, he has pressure tires on Terry Cook, but he's not able to do anything with it thus far. You know, you know it's got to be killing Ted Musgrave. He's there in the one, the, the white and black Dodge. He has such a great truck. He just riding around. He doesn't want to get in the guy's way, but I saw him earlier. He backed off about half a straightaway, chased him back down in three or four laps, and you know it's got to be killing him. Absolutely got to be. Musgrave had gone behind the wall for a rear end problem that's back on the racetrack after winning two in a row. He's got a great seat for this battle right here. You're watching a battle between Cook and Rutman. K Automotive Ford for Terry Cook, Joe Rutman, the Dana Dodge. Rutman the winner in the season opener at Daytona. Rutman won the very first NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series event held here at Martinsville back in 1995. Over Mike Skinner, Johnny Benson, Kenny Wallace, and Herbie Sessler. That was a top five. The very first event here held seven years ago. Down to 28 laps to go here. You, you, you see Joe trying to work Terry on the outside. Bobby Hamilton off the pace. And the other Dana Dodge. Uh, Hamilton had just made that pit stop for fresh tires. This is not a tire problem. This uh, looks to be more serious and sounds more serious as he heads behind the wall. Definitely terminal problems here with only 20-some 20, 20 laps to go. That'll be, that'll be Bobby Hamilton today. First of three NASCAR Craftsman truck visits this year for Hamilton. Plans to run here, Darlington, and Richmond. So we'll see Bobby again. Those two events, tough break for him here in the final 25 laps. Scott Rigg showing the way. The young man from Bahama, North Carolina, 30 years of age. Driving the Team ASE CarQuest Dodge. Brand new truck that Timmy Cahooth and company have brought here. And oh. Ronnie Hornaday has had trouble. Tough break for Ronnie Hornaday. He had a great run going. He was in 11th place. There's, there's his dad, Ron Hornaday Jr. I was just talking about, uh, just thinking about Ronnie. He's had a great run going. Looking for sponsorship so they can run some more races. And uh, unfortunately, there's some damage. We don't know exactly what happened. We'll see if we have a view of it. Tough break for the young man. The Lucas Oil Chevrolet. Pretty heavy right side damage. Already been hit in the left side on that restart incident. Here, here's what happened a moment ago to Ronnie. There's Ronnie coming off of turn four. So, you could see the right front tire go down and uh, made pretty pretty hard contact. Unfortunately, came off the wall and just got, got hit by a little bit on the left side by Nathan Hosley. Not, not too much uh, damage there, but uh, some pretty significant damage on the right front, unfortunately. Is there anything as a driver you can do when that happens, Bill? Really, you just you turn the wheel as hard as you can to the left and hit the brakes and hold on. 
Caution out for the ninth time of day. The final laps when we come back. Hamilton has climbed out of his Dana Dodge. Uh, we've seen a lot of rear ends go today. What was your problem? We had a transmission to go out on it. It uh, I lost high gear like at 105 laps into the race. It was just running in third gear, so uh, it finally just something come apart in it. But uh, had a good truck. Had the Square D guys pitting us and the Oakwood guys pitting us, get them some practice. And Tim Folks has helped me this year again. He was with me last year when we won the race. And this is a brand-new truck. We're shaking it down to get the Joe stable. The one he's got here is what we went with last year. Is he good enough to win this race? I don't know. Yeah, they need to get physical, I think. I'm sure they will, and we're back to green flag. Uh, now, Joe Rutman wouldn't get physical, would he? <laughs> I hate to see Bobby Hamilton. I had a great run here a year ago, as he mentioned, winning this race in dominating style in the Dana Dodge. Scott Riggs trying to hold on for his first win in NASCAR's Craftsman Truck Series competition. That is his teammate, Ted Musgrave, behind him, who had been behind the wall from some 70 laps. Musgrave being shown actually up in 22nd position due to attrition. Musgrave could get a top 20 finish. How about that? That's right. Uh, Great move by Ted Musgrave. Even though Scott Riggs is his teammate, he moved out of the way to let these guys that are racing for the win go. I, I was I was wondering before that it will will Ted Musgrave kind of put the block on him to let Scott Riggs get out ahead, but uh, he moved over, let Travis Quaffle get by in second, Terry Cook in third. Travis got a horrible restart there. It looked like he jumped on the throttle in second gear, spun the tires, and Scott pulled out to a pretty big lead. That's why Ted was able to get in between them. Check in the Travis Quaffle pits with Amy. Well, I think Travis is showing his nerves on that restart with the fact that the spotter's radio just went out prior to one to go to come down for that green flag. So he has no spotter on a track where he would really like to have some help out there. You're a rookie. You've never been here. It's the closing laps. You're battling to try to get there to win it. And you don't have a spotter. I mean, what's that do? I mean, it's obviously your heart rate's got to pick up a little bit. Well, it does. He's, he's getting a break right now because they just had this restart. There's a, there's a lot of distance between them and the lap trucks that are on the track in front of them. So hopefully he won't need a spotter. He just needs to keep his eye on Terry Cook, make sure Terry doesn't get on the inside or the outside and pinch him off. And how about Terry Cook's situation, right? Well, almost identical, Jerry. No radio contact. The spotter, Kay Keselowski, or the crew chief, Bob Keselowski, have been calling to Terry saying, how's the truck, how's the truck? And he does not respond, so apparently no radio contact for the 29. I think he's probably afraid they're going to tell him to come in the pit, so he doesn't want to, doesn't want to acknowledge that he can hear him. On the caution flags, anyway. There is Rutman. Uh, remember, he, he has the fresher tires of those trucks in front of him. He pitted just... Uh, with about 58 laps to go, so he had fresh right side tires. That moves in on Terry Cook. Fourth position, Riggs the leader, Quaffle, then Cook, then Rutland, then Tolzma back in fifth spot. As here is the battle now for third position. Terry Cook hugs that concrete curve, that yellow stripe you see on the inside of the racetrack. That's not just a line, that's a concrete curve that you don't want to get up on. You certainly don't. That's several inches tall. Terry Cook right now, if, if he was to slip and get on the outside, then Joe Rubin would get by him. He done a great job. He has not made any mistakes. He stayed on the inside. He said, hey, Joe, if you're going to pass me, you're going to have to do it on the outside. Terry Cook finished 16th at Daytona, 10th at Homestead, 7th at Mesa Marin, three consecutive top 10 finishes for Ron, Bob, and Kay Keselowski. Still looking for sponsorship on that number 29. They are a threat not only to win here, they're a threat to win the championship. Gotta believe someone's gonna jump on board and say, we're gonna be a part of that team for the rest of the year. And here's a young man. Remember, it was a year ago that Scott Riggs came here to this racetrack and impressed so many people. That's when he got a full-time ride in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. He came here and drove a truck, locally owned, qualified fifth, finished ninth on the lead lap. So this track has been very, very good The young Scott Riggs. How about an ultra successful team? Talking about ultra motorsports, Riggs and Musgrave. Two wins for Musgrave, including last two in a row at Homestead and Bakersfield. And how about that goose egg below Scott Riggs? Well, he's a few laps away from changing that here at one of his home race tracks today. Ten laps to go right now. He's got ten more laps, and he'll change that goose egg. Cook pulling away by a couple of truck lengths from Rutman as Cook continues to hug the inside.
There is, you saw Tolsman go by a moment ago. That is a battered truck. There is uh, Matt Grafton trying to hold on to the position. Matt is back in the sixth spot with Rick Crawford back in seventh. Grafton all the way back up to eighth after getting that tap a little bit ago running fifth. So a little bit of smoke out of Matt Crafton's 88 uh, Chevrolet truck. There comes the big white truck, or the big damage to white truck going by. There's Crafton with a little bit of smoke puffing out of it. Crawford. Crafton the 88, Crawford the 14, Raptor the 3, Ricky Hendrick the 17. By the way, Ricky Hendrick pitted on that last caution flight and took left side tires off, so he has some pretty fresh left sides. Bob Bitch is running out of laps. Sure is. You know it's how hard it is to pass here, and uh, he's having a hard time with Brian Ruffner right now. Moves, moves to the inside, Brian pulls down, throw the block. Same situation here with Brian Ruffner. He has to stay on the inside, has to stay against the curb. Back up front with Scott Riggs and the team ASE Dodge. See Travis Quabble back there in second. Six laps to go. These will be the longest six laps of Scott Riggs' life right here, Jerry. Got to believe that all those years he's driven short tracks around the Carolinas, Virginia, and Tennessee. He's a track champion at Southern National Speedway in Kenley, North Carolina back in 1994. Eight years of late metal stock car racing. Scott said he came here four times in a late model stock car and never once finished the race. This track was never good to him in a late model, but it has been very good to him in a NASCAR Craftsman truck. And how about Travis Quaffle? Had never seen this racetrack until Thursday. He said, we have a chance of winning this race. He said, I, I, this is the kind of racetrack I grew up on in Wisconsin. These, these long straightaways and tight turns. You see the interval. You see he's gained four tenths of a second uh, over the uh, that five lap period. He gained four tenths of a second. That's almost a tenth of a second a lap, but he's about uh, six tenths of a second behind right now, and there's only four laps. So uh, at that rate, it's not going to happen. 30 year old Scott Riggs, 24 year old Travis Quaffle. Right future ahead for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. He's off of that shot down the front stretch that uh, Terry Cook's opened up a little bit of distance between he and Joe Rudman, so. Three laps to go. And they will be celebrating in Bahama, North Carolina tonight if Riggs can hold on. His dad, Russell, is here. His wife, Jay, is here. And the young man who started out in grassroots Winston Racing Series competition for NASCAR. As a late model stock car driver, ran at Orange County where he finished second in the points of 96, third in the points of 95. We'll come down this time for the white flag from Roy Selby. We could have our second first time winner in four events in the year 2001 for the NASCAR Grassburn Truck Series. Got a little bit of traffic in front of me. He wants to be able to negotiate Jason White without any trouble. Comes off turn four, coming down for the checkered flag for the biggest day of his career. Scott Riggs wins the Advanced Auto Parts 250 at Martinsville Speedway. Riggs, the 30-year-old driver, takes the victory. The first of what I'm sure will be many in a NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series career. And Timmy Cahoot and the Ultra Motorsports crew celebrate down in the pits. Back with more in a moment. 24 races complete here are the updated point standings. Riggs extends his lead over Joe Ruttman, Ricky Hendrick, Terry Cook, and Randy Tolsma. Let's go down to Ray. Hey, buddy, great race. I'll tell you what, that was fabulous. Congratulations on your first Craftsman Truck Series victory. Thank you. I can't believe it. Team ASC, Carquist Dodge, they put great trucks on me every race this year. Be right here where I started a year ago, my first truck race. All my family and friends, Timmy Cahooth, 150. NASCAR I mean, Craftsman Truck Series starts for Jim Smith and Ultra Wheels. I got my hats off of them. I, I don't know what to say. I'm just ecstatic. And he really does have his hat off to the crew. Here's Scott Riggs, your winner in the ASE Dodge. All right, congratulations to 30-year-old Scott Riggs that will celebrate in Bahama, North Carolina tonight. For Ray Dunlap, Andy Houston, Phil Parsons, I'm Jerry Punch. Once again, congratulating Scott Riggs on his very first win in today's Advanced Auto Parts 250. Remember, next stop for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, Sunday, May 6th, Gateway International Raceway in St. Louis, Missouri for the Ram Top 200. Coming up next, U.S. National Skiing Championships from Big Mountain, Montana. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Once again, congratulations to 30-year-old Scott Riggs. He's a first-time winner in NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series competition. So long, everyone.
from Martinsville Speedway.